Hi, my name is Jeff Ranke, Editorial Director of Manufacturing.net and Manufacturing Business Technology. Welcome to Security Breach. A great deal of cybersecurity attention, and rightfully so, is paid to the role of defending against and responding to outside attackers. However, just as important to establishing and reinforcing cyber plans is ensuring that internal vulnerabilities are not created or made easier to detect through systems, networks, and new technologies that are introduced to the industrial infrastructure, albeit with the best of intentions. However, the influx of handheld devices and mobile computing power can lead to the unintentional injection of numerous cybersecurity issues. One only needs to look at the history of the Stuxnet virus for proof of how something as simple as a USB stick can lead to massive, and often unrepairable damage. To help lend some insight on such potential security issues is Tom Greedwald. He serves as the president of Heartland, a McHenry, Illinois-based company that works with the industrial sector to improve business operations through technology integration, process implementation, and network redesign. Heartland's specialties include wireless infrastructure, network security, mobile computing, automated data collection systems, and much more. Todd, thanks so much for joining us today. Kind of kicking things off here, when you look at the industrial enterprise from an overall security perspective, are there some systems that you see creeping up that are kind of consistently the most important ones to take take a look at or do a little bit deeper dive on? Yeah, I mean, uh, in our world at Heartland, we're a little bit more focused on pretty specific technology. So we we focus with uh, manufacturing, transportation, um, warehouse logistics, DC types of businesses. Um, so in, in our front, um, you know, one of the big areas is, is your network and what type of network you're running. Um, unfortunately, a lot of the supply chain world is going through a big transformation today to get caught up with the times. But at the same time, there's a lot of legacy systems that are running out there. And the network is one of those that is, is an area of, I call it abuse in a way, yeah. but um, it, it just... A lot of there's business that we work with that they're running into situations on a security threat level that it maybe stemmed with a network that was just really old. Um, <clears throat> there is that set it, forget it kind of mentality in in some of the space. It works. It's a business purpose need. Uh, I'm just doing warehouse. Uh, I'm just doing picking in my warehouse, maybe. Right. So um, so the devices as well. So maybe your, your, your rugged mobile computer that you're scanning barcodes with or your rugged terminal on your forklift or maybe even a tablet. Um, those legacy systems as well tend to be an area that we, we kind of focus in on just at Heartland to kind of go, well, these are all things that could be risk, risk points of um, causing security threats within the organization because they're just not maybe really supported very long. So one of the things as well is also like print so uh, uh there's a lot of old barcode print um, types of technology out um, even laser printers that are used to maybe create a, a pick order might, that might be or even a packing list um, those are all things that again we're, we're kind of we're kind of keeping an eye on and thinking about about what's the strategy on how we're going to um, ensure that those are uh, looked at and validate hey are these secure or not and then what are we going to do about the plan so so you met you mentioned supply chain obviously there's a lot going on there a lot more scrutiny for obvious reasons in the last couple of years and one of the things you see a lot of investment in from the distribution center and supply chain and logistics is really an influx of mobile devices smarter devices mobility is such a big part of the industry 4.0 movement as we see this sort of this influx of smarter smaller mobile devices what are some of the security concerns that you see there um the biggest thing is it's to your point the proliferation of technology is faster than it ever is and everybody wants to look at how to solve the problem about how to make my people more productive how do i increase quality how do i get more out the door onto that truck and deliver to my customer ultimately or whoever they're serving maybe so so the big the biggest thing is you know looking at the technology that wants that wants to be used uh, by maybe operation and then all right let's think about that just to make sure like for instance maybe like an iot I'm, maybe i'm dealing with a cold storage company that has to make sure uh type of business that needs to make sure that hey this ice cream that went in the truck or it's in my warehouse sitting on the dock it stayed at the right temperature the whole time so the problem 
The problem is, well, we need to make sure maybe that dairy product needs to be at a certain temperature. The, the, the solution that could help is monitoring the temperature, but are, are we looking at a solution that is proven that, hey, security has been thought through it. It isn't using some weird radio card in it that, you know, is coming from, um, you know, Asia that hasn't really been proven. It's really thinking that through beyond just the, what the solution provides and, and what it's gonna ultimately do to help us solve the problem. There's that next step of like, well, let's look at how do we ensure it's secure? And that's where, that's an important step to make sure that is happening that sometimes kind of gets overlooked. No, that's a huge point. I think that that can't be overstated really because we are in such a hurry to implement this technology. We know all the benefits, but sometimes we do overlook sort of the blocking and tackling of it, if you will, to make sure it's it's going to work well and it's going to still keep us safe and secure as well with all the data that's flowing through those smarter mobile devices. Yeah, and and one of the things to add too is, you know, if you look at operations, there, you know, a lot of times it's like, hey, let's we need to get something going. Let's fail fast and see if it helps or not. <clears throat> and it might be started, you know, they might start in, well, let's do a bait, kind of pilot beta kind of a thing. But like I said earlier, the flow of the introduction of new technology and just the one example I used around maybe temperature sensing, um, it's happening very quickly. You know, yeah. there's everything from like robotics to wearable technology, even glass technology um, that's being introduced by a lot of different companies. Uh, you know, we work with like zebra technologies pretty closely or Honeywell, uh, Honeywell, for instance. And, you know, they're very good. They're thinking through all this stuff, but there's, there are some other, I'll call it second, third tier types of technology providers that, you know, cool stuff, but what about the, what is it secure? And yeah. it's just, it's just to think about that step is the key thing, not to kind of beat, beat that drum too much, but, but it is something that we see. Uh, troublesome um, where companies get into something and you know we didn't really think about that step so yeah well, I think it kind of bleeds into one of the other things that I wanted to talk about here is when we look at we're, we're talking about cybersecurity, which is typically an IT type of topic it shouldn't be but it typically is and then when you're talking a lot about from the operations side of things which a lot of these technologies are such a big part especially when you look at distribution centers and logistics providers how are we doing in terms of breaking down some of those silos? There's always been turf wars on the, on the plant floor and within the distribution center, but it's getting really so much more important for IT and OT to be talking to each other. What's your experience in working with folks? It it's, hasn't changed. <laughs> <laughs> um, however, at the same time, um, the awareness is there. And in, in some organizations that are a little more mature or uh, bigger on investing, um, in the proper past, they are kind of thinking that through a little bit better. Kind of starts from, you know, like a CTO type of an individual, you know, to be working with the CEO and, and working side by side. Um, I think with the past couple of years, you know, three, four years of, of the rapid kind of development, that's something that um, I'm, we're starting to see more interaction with. But at the same time, there still is that operation role kind of says, all right, we have a challenge. We need to think about how to move things better in the warehouse, um, and that's where sometimes that disconnect happens on on um, not translating over to the IT team. The IT team gets stuck with supporting the technology, um, and and there is that kind of that loop still is happening sometimes. Uh, you know, in a lot of business that we see, but but we serve everything from large types of. Uh, of supply chain businesses to mid-tier. Um, as you get in the mid-tier, it's a little bit easier um, types types of, of size business. Um, but it's the larger ones that we see, you would think they'd be the most mature and thinking this through, but, but sometimes that doesn't happen, so. <laughs> yeah, those turf battles seem to persist, it seems, in the bigger organizations. That's a great point. So we've talked a lot about a lot of bigger picture stuff here, Todd. Let's bring it home a little bit, or a little bit closer to home. Can you tell us a little bit more about what Heartland does and some of the things that you, some of the folks that you're working with? Yeah, no, sure. I mean, we're, we're focused on um, technology, like I said earlier, in the supply chain space. Uh, a little bit more focused on everything from the the inventory types of uh, technology for for that DC um, receiving areas, um, as well as in as you start to move out towards the trucking, you know, for how do you how do you um, look at the trucks as 
you know, more than just delivering, but, but also kind of delivering more value through um, the transportation side of life. We're all used to Amazon and um, Uber as to how we know when it's going to be there soon and it's arriving in 10 stops as you know, and customers are pushing for this uh, information to ensure that they have a good customer experience. Um, at the end of the day, the most important thing that we really preach and, and focus on <clears throat> is uh, you know, technology, it seems like it's going to do really good things is only as good as how well it works and how well it was thought through. So the final component of it is supporting it, you know, so how do we make sure all these workers that are using, you know, some device in their hand to go do picking routines for inventory? Well, if that network isn't stable and the device drops, the person is losing productivity. If the robot, it gets confused as to where it's at because it needs the network to maybe move around. Now the robot gets stuck and it's not really helping, you know, so so the ongoing support and making sure the technology is is working properly to monitor it, manage it and make sure it's deployed properly. That's another area that, you know, we've been seeing a lot of traction, um, how we've been able to help businesses um, implement this technology and then and make sure that it's ongoing level kind of working and flowing <laughs> and tending the, the, what it was supposed to do uh, from the get-go so absolutely and I, I would imagine that's got to get more complicated as more and more vendors get involved you know pick your catch term if you want to call it the connected enterprise smart manufacturing industry 4.0 iot whatever very rarely are manufacturers only working with one company or one supplier. So maybe you can talk a little bit about some of the things to look out for when you are looking, bringing in a lot of these different vendors from a security perspective, what should the manufacturers kind of be aware of and, uh, and implement in order to prevent some challenges down the road? The key thing for us that we're working on is providing that type of partnership where we're all working together. And we're not sitting in our own little bubble and going and blaming each other and go, well, that's his fault, not mine. And that's his fault. And he's pointing back at me, maybe. <clears throat> um, it's very important that I think, and we've seen a lot of great interactions with our our business that we serve, where they're actually bringing us in together and like saying, hey, let's. this is what we're trying to solve here. Uh, how can Heartland help? And how can this provider help? And how are we all working together to kind of to, to provide a better um, um level of support and, and, and service to that business. But getting back to the security front is thinking through all the way about, you know, when you're going to implement something, um, you know, has, have we thought about doing a penetration test, which is looking for vulnerabilities um, when a new solution might be piloted. Let's test that out and make sure before we get too far over our skis, is there something here that, you know, boy, there's, we're noticing, we implemented some sensor or some kind of technology that maybe there's a little bit of a risk. So, but it's working together with um, um, reducing any of the risk and, and making sure we validate that that this is the right type of uh, approach on, on on that. So, no, it makes a lot of sense. I mean, you're really kind of talking too about breaking down those silos that we were just talking about and getting everybody working together and it's refreshing to hear that these different suppliers as well as the the customer the manufacturer the dc is embracing that i think that is sort of a paradigm shift i think it's a big one and i think we've been very cognizant of our side as well as well as the partners that we pick <clears throat> we know that we should stick in our lanes and but we should collaborate and work together and collaboration is like huge when it comes to not only within the the business that we're maybe multiple uh, partners are trying to solve, you know, how we work together. Um, maybe even from the WMS provider to, you know, you know, to security to what, you know, maybe we're focused on. But um, there's just a lot of value in that, you know, in, in working together to ultimately provide a better s solution. Going back to those silo silos, uh, that's the breakdown, right? I mean, yeah. when we're not, even as the as the partners that are serving the business, when we're not working together, eh, that's shame on us you know i mean we we need to work together because we're stronger together when we when we actually collaborate versus trying to do everything on an individual le level and i think there's a lot of um we just i think we're all getting more mature <laughs> so, um and it yeah. sounds kind of funny but but i think the partners that we pick and that we want to work with i mean we realize you know that approach is a winning approach um if 
if you have a partner that's trying to do everything, I would be nervous. I would kind of, you can't be, you know, there's the jack of all trades, master of none versus, hey, this is what our niche is and this is where, you know, we, we thrive. So, yeah. so uh, there's something to be said about that. No, it makes a lot of sense. And it, it is something that the industry just has to embrace. We have to blur some of those lines, those territorial lines, and just realize we all just need to borrow from everybody's expertise to, to get things where we need to get them, which is hard. It's difficult for everybody, but... I, I, I agree, yeah. So. <laughs> uh, last question, Todd, this has been fantastic. Thanks so much again. Last question for you. Again, with all these lines sort of being blurred in terms of responsibilities, there's a lot more onus being placed on employees and employee training to help with a lot of these security approaches or best practices. From your experience, what are some of the things that can be done, should be done, maybe aren't being done, just from an employee training perspective? The key thing with that, though, is for them to be educated on, you know, Hey, if you are going to have a device that may have access to some kind of messaging um, types of solution, or you know, maybe it could be even just email, maybe, uh, so we can communicate better with with people. I mean, there is education around, um, you know, thinking about something like a phishing threat. It seems a little bit, you know, a little bit more um, still focused on the routine and what they do, but making sure people think about if something seems suspicious, you know, just think about it before you maybe do something. Um, you know, as as the lakes of data and oceans of data, whatever you want to call it, um, grow, it becomes important to you know make sure that we're thinking about looking for trends and different things that are happening around. Maybe even utilizing machine learning, but but it's taking the data and then bringing it back to the operations folks and saying, you know, here's things that we're seeing you know, maybe some trend that, you know, maybe we should be thinking about, you know, why is someone have so many retries on trying to get into a computer in the warehouse? Um, I, I'm not really sure what's going on here, but I'm makes me feel like something's not right. Um, and the other part too, is there's a lot of, a lot of, uh, on kind of, it's not even future, but there's a lot of things around even how people inter interface with um, entry points. Like maybe when I go to log in, and I'm Todd and I go to log in and this is how I type, uh, maybe on a computer sitting like out, out on the floor, um, you might type, type differently. And if, if I'm logged in in the floor, then I walk away and now you jump on when I walk away, these are all, all different types of things that, you know, we can educate each other, like, hey, make sure you log out of your computer when you walk away. Thanks, Todd. For more information on the work Heartland does, you can go to www.heartland-usa.com. Thanks for joining us today. And to catch up on past episodes, you can go to manufacturing.net, in.com, or mbtmag.com. You can also check Security Breach out wherever you get your podcasts, including Apple, Amazon, and Overcast. For Todd Greenwald, I'm Jeff Ranke, and this is Security Breach. <laughs>